everybody's got a story. You just have to listen. Oh, I'm Joe Partavilla, and this is Good Listen. And back when I was 17 years old, I had the honor of strutting down the runway of the North Arlington High School fashion show held at the luxurious Fiesta Wedding Banquet Hall on Route 17 in Woodridge, New Jersey. Now, my modeling career was brief and forgettable, but my guest today has just embarked on an unforgettable journey. Her name is Allie Cullifer, and at the age of 35, she's become a runway model. But there's more to her story than just the runway. Allie, welcome. Thank you. Nice to be here. I'm so glad you're here because the reason I want to talk to people on this podcast is I'm impressed by how they have their shit together. And if anyone follows Susie U online, they see like this girl, she's got life a lot. She's got a lot going on. She's a businesswoman. She's a model. Uh, she seems like she's living a great life. So let's start with that. What's the secret to Allie Culliper? How is it all? Is it all smoke and mirrors, Allie? Or are, are, do you, are you really in, in like your full beta mode here? Um, it's taken me 35 years to get here. So I would say a culmination of, of different things. Um, I'm most um, successful when I'm doing a lot of things, right? So I, I really like to be engaged. Um, and if I'm not, so kind of both ends of the spectrum, right? If I'm I'm either not engaged or I'm fully engaged in a lot. So um, I guess, I mean, what you see on social media is, is definitely me. Um, I've recently, it's taken a couple of breakups. Um, I feel like a lot of, like a lot of artists, right? Get their inspiration from, from sad or uh, different difficult events, right? And so, um, yeah, I've had a couple of events that have like catapulted me into transitioning um, into more of like an artistic, um, side of me hobby wise. Oh, that's awesome. And so what, what, what came first for you was like the business side or was it like did, did the modeling and the artistry come in later? What, what, how did you find that? Because yeah, I, I mean, I was like, when I was a little kid, Allie, I only dreamed of being in show business. I didn't know about anything else. I just, I want to be in it. And so, you know, I ended up interning at a radio station, spent 24 years working at a radio station in New York. So it was like, I got to do basically what I dreamed to do. I mean, I wanted to be the next day to let and didn't work out. It's too late for me now, but, but like, I wanted to be an entertainment. So when you were growing up, what were your sort of like hopes and aspirations? Yeah. Well, first of all, Joe, it's never too late. Okay. <laughs> Don't give up. Um, yeah. Gr- growing up, I would say at my core, um, I'm artistic. So I, I went to a school of the arts for theater in middle school. Um, I danced in high school for a dance company. I came from a family um, of artists. My mom was a professional dancer. And so like all of those things were there um, and just kind of grew up out of it, went to school, did the thing that we're all supposed to do, get a degree, right? And start a family um, and and all of those things. Um, So I kind of took, I deviated a little bit, right? And um, when I first started telling my story about how I got into modeling, I initially kind of started with it was by accident. Um, but now looking back on it, I, I think that it was all for a reason. Um, but yeah, so I, I went through a series of, of bad breakups and just wanted to try a new artistic hobby um, to, to give myself some confidence, right? Self-esteem. And so um, I saw an ad for a local runway show, a uh, boutique that I shop at in town, just like very low key like okay i'll put my name in for it now had you ever done anything like that before ali had you done like maybe you just like had a friend who was a photographer took pictures and upload did you do anything like that not really i mean with my family you know family photos yeah. um so so not really it was a little bit out of my comfort zone i would say dance is probably the closest thing right because you're utilizing your body yeah. and movement and that sort of posing right so um, but I, I knew a, I knew someone that was a model, um, a friend and was like, Hey, do you want to teach me how to walk down the runway for this thing? And within a matter of month, a month, it turned into me walking in New York fashion week. So when I say it happened by accident, I, I do think that it was all for a reason, but I'm still digesting it all. Everything happened so fast. Wow. That is crazy. So let's step back a second. So when you saw this ad, what was Ali Culliford's life like? What were you did, like normal day job, just a mom? Like what, what, were, what was going on when you saw that app? Yeah. Um, yes. Very busy. So I, I'm still in the defense industry and that's, you know, my, my bread and butter. Um, but at the time I, I just gone through a breakup. So I was needing some self-esteem. Right. And 
um, figured why not, um, thought it would be good for me to, and even in my career in defense, right? I mean, I need to be, um, need to be the best alley, right? So <laughs> took a chance. And so when you see this ad and you decide to, you, you ask your friends to, to just like, what kind of expectations do you have? Because I think that's, expectations are everyone's enemies. They were like, you know, you could either go in with too low or too high, but like, what was, what, what were you expecting to get out of just applying for for this for this thing yeah zero expectations <laughs> very <laughs> low expectations um I, I think it was just uh, an opportunity for me um also to to like get in shape right so i knew if i signed up for something committed to it um you know trying to be the best version of me right if, if i told somebody that i was going to do it and went through the preparation i had to do it so um low expectations and it it Surpassed my expectation. <laughs> it sounds like it. And so do you have any idea what the competition was like? Because that was one of the things that intimidated me. Like like open calls, like you hear about these all the day. They're like, and a thousand people showed up for this one part or, uh, you know, we're a nationwide casting, a hundred thousand people. So what, what, what was, did you know what the competition would be like when you entered? No, um, I think, I think being 35, Right. And, and doing this for the first time, I have a different perspective because I have built confidence. Um, you know, Allie 10 years ago would have never even thought about thought about this. Right. So even not really knowing the industry or the processes, I think just having confidence that I could do it to be able to learn, learn the industry. Right. And, and that sort of thing. Understand the competition. Um, what you know, I, I think that 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 helped me probably more than anything. Other than, you know, outside of looks and, yeah. you know, I tell people you don't really have to be pretty to model. You have to, um, I would say the two things, have confidence and have to be well-liked. Like people want to do business and, and cast people. I'm sure, you know, same thing for you with, with your line of work, right? Yeah. And it's funny because you mentioned it's 35. And so I, I think you probably know this. Most people do. Like it's a young man's game. Everything is like it. But, but we're, we're all living in a simulation of Logan's Raw. Like after you, if you're over thirty, they like wipe you all, wipe you out of the room. Like oh, you're too old for anything. Um. So at thirty five, how common is that? Like in your now that you're in this world of modeling, how common is it for people to start that late in the game? You know, I think now it's more widely accepted. Um. You know, in the brands that I've kind of, I guess most recently supported um are accepting of different different sizes um different ages that sort of thing so it's definitely becoming more it's becoming more normalized um so one of my one of my favorite brands that i um walked for in miami swim week recently was chrissy king and she you know prides her brand on bringing in models that um that everybody likes right and um really empowerful women um and you know, several, several of the ladies are older than me and fitter than me <laughs> and just amazing to work with. So I definitely think that the industry is changing. Oh, that's so cool. And so if we can go back to the, to, to the, when you filled in that, that thing to, to go be a model, what did you have to do? <laughs> and then when you got accepted, we were like, holy shit. Now, now I actually go through, I have to go through with it. What was, was that such a situation with such a long age where you like just shot like, now what do I do? Yeah, I would say. I was excited, um, probably for the first couple of weeks leading up to it. Um, so the, the panic didn't really kick in. Um, we did, let's see, we did a couple of rehearsals in Charleston. Um, it was a, it was a designer, mainly a group from Charleston that, that went and walked in New York fashion week for the first New York fashion week. Um, and so we had a couple of Charleston sessions, um, and then leading up to New York, walking so i had actually never walked down a run an actual runway like that was my first show um so there was definitely panic when we got there and realized that um there wasn't time for the run through <laughs> oh boy and um yeah it's an interesting moment right before you're about to walk on stage kind of that that panic kicked in it was like what did you do ali why did you sign up for this like you have absolutely no choice now. Go. I, I, I know for some people it's hard to stay present in the moment. Some people either just take it all in or and then like black out. They don't know what happened. Yeah. Do you remember that experience when you step foot on onto that runway? Uh, do you have any flashbacks about it, or is it, it just just like at this point, like just all purple haze? Um, 
I remember it all. Really? Like, okay. so I have, I have had like blackout moments in other shows. Um, but that first one, you know, I, I remember very vividly. <laughs> and what was, what were some of the moments about that? Like when you say, because I can imagine you're not walking down the runway in like Chuck Taylor's. It's probably like, you've got like really elaborate shoes you're, and you're walking on this runway for the first time. What were your legs jelly? Um, no. So the first walk was good. <laughs> the first designer, the second designer, I actually wasn't, um, hired to walk for. They asked me on, when I was on set, basically. So learning the industry, I didn't know that, um, designers would c- come up to you and ask you to walk for them if, right, if there were changes in their lineup. And so I accidentally, I guess, turned down like two or three designers while I was there. And I didn't know they were trying to ask me <laughs> oh, geez, to walk for them. And I thought that they were asking if I was part of their lineup. And I was like, no. So it's funny looking back on it. But um, but I did have one designer once I I figured out that I really, I was eyeing their stuff like all night and um, Perry Jones. And he came up and asked. So I got to walk a second time and for him. But that situation, um, he had to change me as we were walking backstage. Like he needed a last minute model, right? So I'm literally changing backstage I have like probably five people trying to get me dressed. The jacket wouldn't button all the way. And he's like, just go. You got to hold it. <laughs> so I remember all of that very detailed. Um, but it was it was a really cool experience. Just like talk about being thrown in it. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> That's awesome. And so you had this experience. It sounds like you enjoyed it. What were the next steps? Like at that point, you're like, all right, now I'm alive. Yeah, it. It's definitely still in progress. So I, the big, I guess, other inflection point after the breakups, um, I actually got laid off by my previous company um, probably like three weeks after I started modeling. So un- unrelated, wow. completely separate. But when I look, when I, you know, think back about things, I definitely think it was for a reason, like whether you think God, the universe, whatever, put put this in place for me to have some confidence while I went through that. So I'm actually in the process of writing a book about layoff to LA, I think is what I, what we're going to go with it, um, to kind of detail my journey, how, you know, the layoff catapulted me through modeling. Wow, that's so cool. All right, so I know there was a picture on Instagram floating around where you have like these giant wings, like these big yes. red wings. I've never walked with wings. I don't know what, <laughs> how, you know, you have to walk, is there a special trot to it? Like, what what is that experience like? They are really, really heavy. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. It, it's different, um, but they give you so much confidence. So the wings that you saw were Chrissy King, the label. Um, she's a primarily swimwear designer, the one that I mentioned, um, and also who I walked for in Miami Swim Week. So it's a big deal to get to wear her wings. You know, first time models don't usually get them, but um, it's supposed to represent the essence of Victoria's Secret when they, you know, were doing their runway fashion shows. Um, so it's a little bit of challenge. I bet. Yeah, no, I, I probably fall over on my face. So well done. You, you, no, no trips or falls so far during your modeling career. You've only been doing it for a little while, but like, have you had any kind of like embarrassing moments where, yeah, because I'm such a klutz, Alan, I'm sure I would probably wouldn't survive one walk down the right way, but like, did you have any issues like that? No, knock on wood, okay. but you know, I would say in daily life, I am a little clumsy, but I think because this is so important, right? I'm like mentally preparing for it um i'm i'm pretty i, I say muscle memory is so important right you're just you're practicing your walk over and over and over to where you know even if you do black out right you're gonna your body's gonna know what to do and so you you, uh, you you decide to make this a part of your life what happens next just for folks listening to one of if like do you go for an agent at that point and then they get your work how does it go because again i think we're all familiar with the old 80s 90s supermodel model of like you get you hooked up to a designer, then you do a, a campaign or something like that. But like, what was yeah. life like for a 35 year old model in 2024? Yeah, I'm, I'm still figuring it out. Um, in terms of agencies, I would say that I've had more success looking for my own opportunities um, for modeling that resonate with what I'm interested in. Um, you know, certainly younger models who are 100 percent dedicated into it and doing it full time. You know, agencies are definitely um, of importance for them. But I've had success just, you know, I, I like fashion. Like, I love fashion. So looking at brands that I like and reaching out to them, and um, I've kind of been more successful that way. That's so cool. And you're based in Charleston, South Carolina. And, you know, I'm a New Yorker. I know that New York, L.A., Paris are, are big 
fashion hubs for models. What is geography or how does geography play a role in models these days? I mean, obviously I know the virtual nature of being able to do, do things anywhere, but like how does the, uh, where you live affect, you know, how you're able to proceed in, in the modeling part of your career? Yeah, I would say that um, most agencies are pretty flexible coast-wise, right? So um, being in Charleston, um, you know, I could get a direct flight to New York or Miami, right? And so um, it makes a, it makes it pretty easy where I'm at. Um, I would say I haven't really, I did LA Fashion Week once, um, but yeah, from coast to coast is a little bit more difficult. Nice. And so uh, you mentioned a couple of times breakups and, you know, I don't know how personal you want to get here, but in terms of like, how do people separate life from their work? Because I know for many people, a breakup could just spiral into their professional life and then affect that. You know, if, if people, uh, you know, I think because of the pandemic, we become more empathetic with working with people like we now like care about their feelings, which we took a pandemic to, to figure that out. But like, but it, it can have its toll. How did you deal with those and how did it sort it's it sounds like this the, the last one kind of propelled you it, it, through your modeling, but like how did those breakups affect you on a daily basis from from all the successes you were trying to attain yeah i think that they pushed me into extreme success <laughs> um you know i i probably wouldn't have had the motivation to be honest so when i started um modeling yeah a little bit was like a you know a stick it to the x's right the the couple of breakups that i'd went through so i'm thankful I'm now I'm very thankful that they happened and um, I would no, I would never be where I'm at today. Yeah, I was just I was asking you like the sli sliding doors question. If you were like in a happy, happy relationship where, you know, white picket fences, you know, kissing, kissing, you know, as they walk in the door, like, um, do you think if you had any of that, it would have you, you don't think the bottle anything would have happened if you had this sort of like perfect whole life, so to speak? Absolutely not. Really? I yeah, I heard that. I mean, I was married for a while. Um, and I didn't really have time for hobbies or anything. I have two kiddos. Um, and so just work, 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 take care of the kids. Um, when I went through my divorce, we, we co-parent the kids. So I, I don't have them half the time. Right. And so I've, it opened up the doors to, to find things that I'm interested in. That's so cool. And I love the fact that we're kind of, uh, more open-minded in 2024 in terms of allowing people to be themselves, but also have a corporate job. So I'm curious, how does corporate world mix with the modeling world? Because, you know, there could be some ultra conservative people like, oh, I, I don't, the model, I don't want to do this model. Well, they're, you know, they're not very smart. So uh, how does, <laughs> you know, does that, does that ever, do, do those, the paths ever cross in terms of like your, your day to day? I'm still, I'm still trying to navigate that. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's definitely perceptions. I think that where I want to move with this is to blend the both, right? And how do I how do I utilize the successes that I gained from modeling while I was laid off, the duration that I was laid off, to um, to empower other women? So, um, kind of navigating through that. But um, I've always been focused on women empowerment, and even in on the career side, right? Um, women's empowerment groups. So, um, you know, I, I want to be able to benefit. Um, I want other females to benefit from my successes. And so whether that's um, just being a motivator for them, coaching, I don't know what that looks like, yeah. but but certainly there are things that can translate over to the business side. That's awesome. And uh, you do talk a lot about women empowerment on LinkedIn. And um, I'm curious because there is this cliche that women can't work together. Women are always trying to, you know, stab each other in the back. And and I always, I, I've spoken to people about this and I think it goes back to like our caveman sort of, uh, you know, makeup where, Back in the, the Stone Age, you know, the men were, were the providers and then the women had to fight off to fuck get a good provider. So I think that's sort of ingrained in a lot of us. It's just a silly little thing I think about, but I think that's sort of yeah. where that might have started from. How does women empowerment fit into this? Because I feel like you're seeing more and more of it, but, but sometimes, you know, <laughs> a lot of that DNA comes out. So how, how, how do you help with women empowerment in a world where sometimes a lot of those old cliches could come to life? Yeah, you know, one of the things that really surprised me about modeling, um, I probably would, I had that stereotype, right? I, I assumed that um, maybe the girls were going to be catty, right? It was going to be competitive a little bit. I mean, I didn't know, but um, I think most people would probably assume that, right? And so getting into it, the most loving, kind, 
sweet, encouraging individuals I've met have been have been through modeling oh. and fashion and all the different related um, activities that go into that. So I was very pleasantly surprised. Um, you know, on the business side, yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely competitive for females, but um, you know, I, I want to utilize what I what I've learned, and um, I know if you ask if you ask other girls, they're going to say different things, yeah. right? I mean, you hear stories from from other folks, but um, I you know I've been really happy, and I always say that it's not a coincidence; it's a God or the universe that has put certain women in my life, right? That have um, encouraged me throughout all of these hardships, and so um, I'm the stereotypes that I would have thought of before aren't really relevant good i'm glad uh you mentioned uh, the fact that the, the world of molly and the women you ran into there i'm just curious because i know i sometimes being a middle-aged guy when i run into teenagers they make me feel like 90 so i'm sure in the world of modeling you're probably seeing a lot of teenagers how, how does that work how, how does that work because i'm sure there is this huge juxtaposition of you know there's like you said people in different ages but i'm sure a, a majority of them are all kind of like teenagers or their or their early 20s how how, how how do you feel like you fit into that mix? You know, it's funny. Um, sometimes when I look back at pictures, you can't really tell a difference. Um, it, you would think that you would, but um, like I've I've modeled with other teenagers, right? Like sixteen and seventeen year olds. And when you, when you have the makeup, when you have the clothes on, and everything, um, you're at your best. You look confident, and so you really don't even think about it. Um, it's funny because in the business world you know, people will age me or they'll, they'll think that I'm like 10 years older than I am or something because of, of my expertise or where I've been able to, um, how far I've been able to grow. Right. And so they just assume they add extra years. And then in the modeling world, I'm modeling with 17 year olds. Wow. That's so cool. Um, so in terms of, you mentioned writing a book and, and, and telling your story, why do you think, you know, do you think now's the time to do that? Have you gotten to the point you like, where you've sort of like, like I joked earlier about like your, your full self, like this is the yeah like to share that. I think so. I, it kind of started just as therapy, right? Just kind of writing my my story out on paper, um, and uh, and it, it was therapy. It was therapy. I work from there. Yeah. But um, but yeah, I, I'm that's kind of where I'm focusing my efforts right now. I'm not doing as much of the modeling um, per se. I'm, I'm busy busier on the work side, but um, just kind of going back to my artistic you know, creative, I've, I found a lot of joy, um, and kind of writing everything down. Um, so I want to see where that goes and, um, I'm hopeful that it can help others, um, whether it's female or not. Right. Um, so yeah, no, absolutely. And in terms of where did this, where this goes, because, you know, obviously age is not an issue with you right now. Like <laughs> you're doing things that most people wouldn't imagine. I mean, even though they are doing it, like where does like the next, because you mentioned you had some rocky years before leading up to this, but like, what is the, it seems like you might have a more of a master plan for the next 10. Yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, really the book. So just kind of give a little bit of background. Um, my grandmother passed away about six months ago. I had a series of events when I say like I had a tough year, probably every life event that could have happened, happened in that year. Wow. Um, so my grandmother passing, she was an educator um, and an author and wrote a book. And so, um, when I, after, once I started writing everything down on paper, um, I realized how important it was to me to, to become an author. Um, I, I would have never thought that that was something that I would even think about. Um, so I, honestly, I think that's probably more of a challenge, um, a challenge role for me that, than the modeling, but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about it. So I, I do see a big picture with it. Um, what exactly it looks like completely, I don't know, but but trying to get there. And how do you, and I hate to ask this because it's like it's like that, that stupid question everyone asks, like, how do you a mother do all this? But like the fact that you're a model, a mom, a businesswoman, an author, like, does that work? And, and you, we started the top out like keeping busy is sort of like your default setting. But how do you make that all work at the same time? I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm crazy. I mean, something has to give, right? Um, whether it's working out. I mean, I have to flex somewhere in my schedule. But um, no, I, I have, I have gone through prioritization in my life and and what's important to me, right? So you know, maybe some of the socializing or um, you know, 
networking events that I didn't need to go to or things like that. Like I've really tried to prioritize what's important to me um, as as best as I can as a mom. <laughs> yeah. And it seems like you kind of had a lock on what your life could be now. But, you know, you mentioned a lot of the stuff you went through, a couple of breakups. Is, do you sometimes... Like, I don't know, do you internalize it and then be like, what did I do? Is this is this my fault? Because I think sometimes maybe people be able to take fault. Like, is that the other person? Well, what did I do? Um, is that something that you had to battle with as as you got through to this other side where you're obviously happier and more fulfilled in your life? But like, it, did you ever internalize it and be like, is it me? What's going on? Yeah, I mean, definitely, right? I mean, yes. Um, kind of where I'm at now, though, I- I'm thankful right, that that those events happened and didn't work out because looking back on it, they would have been, it would have been terrible decisions. Um, Not talking negatively about the ex-husband, this is post, um, yeah, post-divorce. But yeah, just probably not just the the place that I was in, looking back on it. Actually, my question is, why why did I put up with that, right? Like, uh, what was wrong with me to put up with that? Um, So definitely a lot of uh, reflection. That's cool. And what do the what do your kids think of, of mom and the model? You know, they're so cute. They're so proud. You know, I would say the um, the biggest thing that I get out of this is being able to tell my kids that mommy walked in New York Fashion Week. Mommy is thirty five years old. Like we've had a tough year. We faced some stuff, but your mom walked in New York Fashion Week. Um, brings me tears thinking about it. But um, no, they're so cute. They're very supportive. Um, my son. Actually, a cute story. He stayed up uh, for casting for Miami Swim Week. It was a big deal. I've never been. Um, and so we were waiting. He stayed up late one night with me, like, doing the Instagram Live for Chrissy King and um, and stayed up and was so cute. It was like that moment was just so special. Wow. I mean, it must be great that to have you doing this at, at this point in life where your kids are old enough to somewhat get it. Because I think if you were, if your kids were like toddlers or, or like two years old, they probably yeah. would understand. And and in a way, you're sort of implanting the seeds of success into your son because they're like, hey, my mom could do this. It, 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 uh, you know, age is not a factor. It's just that she's grinding her ass off and she's doing this. So what a great lesson yeah. you're like leaving your kids, regardless, regardless of what happens in the future. Like all, all these little steps you've taken that I think are it's, it's sort of like this ripple effect, like this butterfly effect on, on your kids, you know, lives. Hopefully. Yes, Absolutely. Wow. And now that you're in the world of modeling, uh, you know, I joke that like I don't know anything about it, but like, is it what you expected it to be? I know you mentioned the fact that, you know, you, the, the women are friendlier than you thought, but like the industry or just the, the grind of it, because you came from this you know white collar world where it was sort of like a meritocracy. If you did well, you moved up in the chain, but modeling, it's a little different. So how, how did how did you the you know, we talked about you get zero expectations, but now now that you're looking at it, I was like, oh, this is actually a, a pretty cool place to work. Yeah, yeah. I I think that um, my takeaways are related to learning a new industry, right? Um, You know, if I'm just in the business world, if I'm getting up to speed on a new account or a new customer, right? I mean, it takes time, right? There there are lessons that you're going to learn. And there were lessons that I learned just through experience. Like there was no other way to to learn them than through experience. Um, You mentioned, or we talked a little bit earlier about about agencies, right? So photographers is another subject right like knowing um how to negotiate with photographers um doing your research on photographers um and and brands right um so i would say i probably wasn't equipped but just through through experiences kind of learned to navigate okay and now what's it like because obviously you you got the book and you're going to put yourself out in the world you've been a little more private but now that you're putting yourself out there on instagram you get you gain a big following What's it like having this bit of fame now? And like, you know, what is it bizarre that you <laughs> that you were like a, a businesswoman one day and the next thing you're like an influencer? Like, of what it, I was like, how how's it just affected just like your you yourself as a person? Yeah, it is weird. Um, I would say the first time like that I realized that I was successful <laughs> Um, with, with the modeling, I was, um, at the airport and I was, I was actually on the way to Miami swim week, um, on a Friday and I ran into one of my followers in the airport and they were like, at, they stopped me and were like, Ellie, 
oh my goodness, are you going to Miami? Like they had been following my stories and everything and um, wished me luck. And wow. it was so cool. I was like, just taken aback. I'm like, is this real? <laughs> yeah, you will you will never get used to that. I mean, me, I was fortunate enough to be in radio in New York in 40 years. And I was still like, after 40 years when people ran up and be like, hey, I listen to him. Like, oh my God, really? Like, because I think we're so sheltered that we're like, oh, does anyone really yeah. care about us? But you'll be shocked to know yeah. it, it, it's going to be wild. And I, I randomly act, ask this of people that have a larger followings, but like, what is your DMs like? Is it is it a weird place? Is it what kind of messages do you get from folks? What what what, what is that? Like, what is the IG world of Alec Oliver like? Yes, all <laughs> all things. There, there's a there's a lot. Um, yeah, just learning to navigate that too, right? And um, I, I'm a people person. I'm a people pleaser, so I had to you know figure out um how how to respond or not respond right when it makes sense um i i want my followers that that support me to feel supported so you know i i don't like i had to deal with like um not feeling bad about ghosting people or yeah. not responding to every single thing right just volume volume wise right like you can't really respond to every single thing so yeah there's some interesting stuff i actually had one um yeah, you get some weird stuff. <laughs> no, come on, I had one. Please, please, please share. You had one what? No, there there was one really weird, like almost had to um, get a restraining order. I had to file a police report. Yeah. Sure. I never had one of those. <laughs> Online safety. Good for you. Wow. All right. Um, let's wrap things up by talking about the, the near future. Uh, I know you got the book. You're still modeling. You got the, the day job. Uh, if I were to have this conversation with you one year from now, what would Allie Culliper's life look like? Well, hopefully there would be no more significant life events. <laughs> right, okay. Get past um, that. Like a steady, a steady life. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know if the book, if I'll be ready to put it out by then. But um, yeah, I think one thing, one of the things I've learned from all of this is one thing has led to another, just naturally, right? Uh, doing the first audition for that boutique that I mentioned um turning into multiple brand deals and and all kinds of things um so yeah i i think there probably will be more right with um putting my my story out there so um i'm looking forward to see kind of what that translates into awesome and last thing on your ig you, on your profile it says saved by grace what, what does saved by grace mean to you yeah my my faith is extremely important so um you know i i think in most parts of my life, um, friends, colleagues, um, know that I'm a Christian and I want to be able to represent that in, in all capacities of my life. So, and certainly the modeling journey ha has really strengthened my faith. Um, like I said, there's no other way to describe it than, um, than God's plan. That's awesome. My name is Allie Culifer. Well, if folks want to find out more about you, Allie, where would be the first place to start? I'm assuming it's Instagram, but I'll let you do the talking. Sure, yeah. Instagram's good. Allie Culifer. Find me there. Allie, thanks so much for the time. really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Trev. That's today's Good Listen. You can find me on Instagram, too, at Joe Partavilla, and on TikTok at Jay Partavilla. If you want to shoot me a note, you can send me an email at joepartavilla at protonmail.com. If you were listening to this on Apple or Spotify, please leave a five-star review. That'd be awesome. And if you're watching on YouTube, click that thumbs up. It's a small gesture, but it really helps the channel. Thanks for spending some time with me today. I will see you next time. Adios.